Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're here for the first time. I'm Rachel, or Ray, over on Instagram. What Ray reads, feel free to follow me. In the video today, I thought I'd do my top favourite reads of 2023. So these are the books that I've either rated five stars because I just lived, breathed, existed, bowed at the feet, or they just impacted me. And they may not have been quite five stars, but they're getting an honourable mention because it's my channel, my books, and I like them. So let's get to it. So let's get to it. First, we're going to start with books that are rated five stars from the books that I've read so far this year. I've only rated six books, five stars. I am a little bit behind on my reading challenge. I set my reading challenge up to read 60 books because last year I read, my goal was 50, but I read 52. And you had rambled on for 18 pages. <laughs> Front and back! <laughs> I am a li little bit behind, but we're gonna do it. We can do it. Sure, Jan. The first book of the year that I actually read, which was a bit of a leap for me because I don't usually read fantasy, but this one blew my socks off. <laughs> Dear Lord, what a sad little life. It's Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is light fantasy. I'm really not a fantasy girly at all. Just, no, it's not me. I'm just really... Not against it, but I'm just not drawn to it. But I took a chance because it was all over Bookstagram and I thought, I need to see what's going on. If you're not familiar with it, I'll read the blurb to you right now. An act of translation is always an act of betrayal. Oxford, 1836, the city of dreaming spires. It is the center of all knowledge and progress in the world and at its heart is Babel, Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, the tower from which all the power of the empire flows. Orphaned in Catan and brought to England by a mysterious guardian, Robin Swift thought Babel a paradise until it became a prison. But can a student stand against an empire? Okay. Colour me curious. So without giving too much away, Babel is set in 1836, I think. Its main character is an orphan from Canton. He gets brought over by a rich white man who's like a professor in Oxford. Oh Lord. Again. A fucking again. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. He starts looking after him and, and you think he's gonna provide him with a great life, but you start to notice things aren't what they seem. There's a lot of racism and colonialism and the impact that it has on the world. The people in the hub, the epicentre of the superpower that is the UK at the time, they're actually using the act of translation to colonise and control people. Well, just as I thought. I don't want to go into it too much, but if you're into history, like fantasy, it's very like fantasy. There are some fantastical elements in it, but mostly it's very historical. The writing, the pacing, and the characters, you're just, you're just really on board with what they're doing. You really feel for them, and there may be an act of rebellion. So you're gonna have to read it and find out. Yeah, Babel, five stars. Thank you. The next book that I rated five stars is Notes on an Execution by Danya. Kafka? Hopefully I pronounced that right. This was another one that I saw a lot on Bookstagram. I really love thrillers and I love true crime and crime-based documentaries. Just Usually I find a lot of the thrillers are just a bit generic and the payoff's not worth it. This has got an unusual sort of perspective in that it's from the point of view of the person who's on death row and it's his final 12 hours before he's to be executed. So it switches between him and the women who either survived or were impacted by what he did. It's just a very unique and riveting take on 
the genre and I think it's very oversaturated the true crime and crime genre at the moment to read something that was basically felt like a brand new take on it was surprising to be honest so if you're into thrillers true crime or crime related things this one's for you you'll fly through it Thank you. The next book I gave five stars is Word Slut by Amanda Montel. This is the second book that I've read by Amanda Montel. I read Cultish. That's about the language of fanaticism and cults. And Amanda Montel's got a really funny, engaging way of writing that makes it enjoyable to read lots of like factual information, which is what she does in this. This is the history it says a feminist guide to taking back the english language she's basically talking about how certain words and phrases that are used against women derogatory or lgbt communities just lots of gender-based language she goes through the history and the linguistic st stylings of it it's just really interesting and found myself lolling <laughs> just... <laughs> i have to laugh <laughs> <laughs> even though there's lots of like study based research in there but yeah if you're into feminism you're interested in learning about certain languages why we're called mm, bitch and other negative words then read this and also check out amanda montel's other book Thank you. the next book that i rated five stars is probably the last book i rated five stars which is claire keegan's small things like these i haven't read any of claire keegan's work before but i watched oppenheimer with killian murphy and he said in an interview that he was gonna be in the adaptation of this book so i got this and foster and i read them both like back to back like in the same week they're only short i loved foster this one has more of like a classic feel to it i think in the future this might be considered a classic the way we consider 1984 and the bell jar things like that so it's set in ireland in 1985 i'll just read you the blurb you're joking not another one oh for god's sake i can't honestly I can't stand this. It is 1985 in an Irish town. During the weeks leading up to Christmas, Bill Fairlong, a coal and timber merchant, faces his busiest season. As he goes round the houses making deliveries, he feels the past rising up to meet him and encounters the complicit silences of a small community controlled by the church. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Obviously, this is set in Ireland in the mid 80s. It deals with, what are they called? Magdalene laundries. Let me just look that up. So I did just check and they all are called the Magdalene Laundries. If you've ever watched the film Philomena with Judy Dench, that deals with similar themes to this. Basically, it's from the point of view of Fairlong family, specifically Bill. It's through his eyes. He discovers that everybody seems to know about it, but they're keeping quiet. It highlights how nothing will change and things, terrible things are allowed to happen. If people keep quiet, it takes one person to go in the opposite direction direction for things to change but I don't want to obviously go into it too much without spoiling it. If you're interested in Irish history or history of the Magdalene Laundries then I highly recommend this book. I think Claire Keegan's style of writing is absolutely stunning. So so stunning isn't she? She's absolutely stunning. Yes. Thank you. Last book that I rated five stars. Actually, no, that's not the truth. Is Chanel Miller's Know My Name. You're probably familiar with the Stanford essay. I'm not gonna say the full word because I'm pretty sure YouTube flags videos that say certain words because God forbid women talk about certain stories. And then, I know. She was referred to as Jane Doe. Her identity was protected for years. And then she took her power and a voice back and wrote her own story. And the only way to read about the story, in my opinion, is reading it in her words. Chanel Miller is an amazing writer as well. She's very vivid and personal. If you are interested, I highly recommend reading this. I'm excited to see what she does in the future because she's in a lot of different mediums. She's an artist and obviously a great writer as well. I'll be keeping my eye out on what she does in the future. Thank you. Don't mind me, but 
If you hear any whining off camera, that's our other dog, Milo, who is quite the brat when he's not getting attention. I would like your undivided attention, please. So we need to get through these books because, you know, she's got things to do. It's just you coming. do. The next book that I rated five stars is a recent read that I thrifted on Vinted. It's called Being Lolita, a memoir by Alison Wood. This is basically the author's personal memoir you can see that of when she was in high school and she was essentially groomed by her teacher so before you read this i'd just give a trigger warning to say that if you're sensitive to any of the topics of essay and grooming you should proceed with caution with this one it's such an impactful and touching story she really like dives into how pop culture has trained us and switch the narrative of what Lolita actually is about. People conflate it with being romantic and sensual, but really it's about a predator who grooms and abuses a young girl and there's people around who are romanticising it and actually using it as a tool to groom underaged girls and telling them that it's romantic, but I beg to differ. Disgusting! And so does Alison. So if you're into memoirs and you want to give this a go, I highly recommend this. So we've done the five stars and the, there's been a lot of four, four and a half star books that I read that I really enjoyed. But the ones that I'm, I've got four other books here that I've read this year and I'm just going to give them a shout out, honourable mentions, because they either weren't what I expected or they were really enjoyable to read. Yeah, they stood out to me. So first we're gonna go for Happy Place by Emily Henry. I'm an Emily Henry stan now. Along with fantasy, I don't tend to read much romance either because I find the genres like a little bit oversaturated with tacky and <laughs> really the quality is kind of off in romance, I find. It's very rare that you read one and the female character's like fully fleshed out and she's got her own like life and ambitions. Everything outside of romance is kind of forgotten about, but Emily Henry, not only is she funny, the characters are always like their own person. They have their own life and journey first before the romance element. So if you're, if you're interested in rom-coms, this is like the perfect author for you. You'll get through it quickly. They're enjoyable. This one is about a couple who they're like in the midst of a breakup and they go have like a friend's weekend away and they end up like rekindling the relationship. It's a bit will they, won't they? Basically it's iconic rom-coms in book format. So get on to this. The next book and author, because I've discovered one of my new favourite authors. I'm not joking, bitch. Big Swiss by Jen Began or Began. First of all, can we just appreciate how fabulous this cover is? Oh, stunning. Yeah. Since reading this, I read her other book, Pretend I'm Dead, and I ordered her book after that which is called Vacuum in the Dark. Anyway, if you're after unhinged female girly boss queen, are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. No, I'm joking. <laughs> if you're after like unusual female character who does certainly questionable things, read this one. It's entertaining, it's fresh, weird. There's dogs in it as well. It's about sex therapists who gets someone to transcribe as sessions. The person who's the transcriber, Greta, she comes obsessed with one of his clients and she befriends her, crosses so many boundaries and becomes obsessed with the client. Weird relationship and shoes, bizarre, unusual characters. And they are apparently adapting this for HBO into a mini series with Scouse Queen Jodie Comer. So if you're a fan of Jodie Comer, this author, or unhinged female girlies, give Big Swiss a go. Another honourable mention is another RF Quang. It's actually Rebecca. We've got a full name on here, which I learnt is because female authors don't sell well in fantasy. We're not here for that. No. Dip a stutter. 
she put Babel and her other box under a pseudonym and then this is a different genre for it. It's a bit more contemporary thriller-ish. After reading Babel, I'm like, I'm a girly now, I'm, I'm a stan. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. I flew through this quickly. It is so like pulpy and thrilling. And I've heard some people say that they thought it was a bit generic. It's like a trope that's been done before, but I, I thought it was fresh and it had like an unusual take on it. But it's still got some similar themes that she has in her other work. Themes of racism, cancel culture. Obviously that cancel culture is not in Babel, but you know, it deals with themes of racism, racism specifically in the publishing industry. Something happens to an author in it. But if you want to find out, you're going to have to read it. Another stunning cover. Great read. And finally, The Rachel Incident. It's not about me. <laughs> by Caroline O'Donoghue. I was kindly gifted and sent this by Virago. So thanks for that, Virago Press. I spotted this in the bookshop and I was like, hmm. That seems interesting and not just because my name's in the title. Spelt incorrectly, I have an extra A in there, but I read her other book and loved it years and years ago. It's called Promising Young Woman, not the film. It's got the same title, but check that film out, Prom Promising Young Woman with Carey Mulligan. Or a film. And the book by Caroline O'Donoghue. But this one is set in Cork in Ireland. It's basically about just it's, it's a bit coming of age, being in your early 20s and having a job and trying to figure things out, leaving university, living with your friends, relationships, friendships, the breakdown, affairs. Okay, work. And there's like elements of privilege in it as well. A more bourgeois group of people in the Cork area, the artists and the professors. The main character, Rachel's kind of caught in between. So is her friend. What's her friend's name? I've kind of forgotten his name. James. And if, if I lived in Cork in the time that this was set and it was a real story, I feel like we'd be friends. Okay. I didn't expect it to be about what it was. I thought it'd be something different, but especially the last quarter of the book you kind of like riveted to figure out what happened because it starts in the future and then she's looking back on her early 20s and certain things happened she touches on the abortion rights in ireland and how that impacted her and other women a great character study of just interesting characters james and rachel particularly because they're the two bffs i could just read about them doing whatever they were doing james and rachel would be like my friends. Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. <laughs> it's like, James, Rachel. <laughs> what are they like? I just thought this was a retail good time. If you want a contemporary book by a female author with interesting characters, an interesting story. Did I say interesting anymore? So let me know if you liked any of the books that I spoke about in the video if you've got any book suggestions that are similar to the ones i spoke about that you think i might like comment below and maybe i can check them out i can't get enough suggestions obviously so yeah i'm hoping to make more videos maybe i'll try and make one once a week so keep checking back subscribe if you haven't like the video share it be my friend and i'll see you in the next video so bye Mom, you know, instead of mom.